So a lot of you guys said yes. You wanted me to make a video on the lawn running fan theory that Franklin Richards, the reality warping son of Reed Richards and Susan Storm from the Fantastic Four, secretly controls the Marvel Universe. So the first thing this theory does is it kind of establishes its basis, which is the nature of Franklin Richards' powers. Now, Franklin gained his powers from two different places, and depending on what era of Marvel Comics you're talking about, it can kind of go either way. In his original introduction in Fantastic Four Annual Number 6, he gained his powers by way of the Cosmic Control Rod, which, if you're not familiar what that is, is basically an artifact that allows a person to control cosmic energies. In effect, the power of creation. Whereas for a number of years following that, Marvel established that Franklin Richards is actually a mutant, and that's where he derives his powers. He has an X gene, just like any of the other members of the Fantastic Four, but instead of a healing factor or shooting optic blasts out of his eyes, he can change, create, or destroy universes. Now, the second thing that it draws on here is the idea that Franklin Richards never really grows up. Technically, I guess that's not true. In more recent years, we've seen him older than he was in the past, but that's about as old as you've seen him, with the exception of maybe Psylord when he kind of made himself a teenager. But what you ended up getting is either the younger version of Franklin Richards or this just kind of inexplicable introduction of himself as an adult from the future who came to the present day in order to save the life of his father. But one of the things that you're going to notice over the course of this theory is that where we could look at that and say that's clearly evidence that Franklin grows up, we're actually going to turn that on his head. And we're going to introduce the idea that Franklin willed all that to happen because it's just the only way to make things make sense. It's how a child would envision that kind of scenario taking place because it would just seem fun in the mind of an older child. So the first piece of evidence that it provides here is from Fantastic Four issue number 141 back in 1973. And it says that Franklin was spoken of as having galaxies at his feet. In 1979 in Fantastic Four issue number 216, it was predicted that the world would be too small for him. Now we know that is an accurate statement because in Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four, when his older self came to the past, that version met with Galactus and Galactus was in awe of the power that Franklin had. He never realized exactly how capable Franklin was despite all the things that he had done over the course of his life, which we'll talk about in this video because some of those things are crazy, but Galactus revealed to Franklin that when the universe reaches its heat death, Galactus and Franklin will be the only two beings left in existence. They will ultimately merge into a singular being at the end of the universe, and they'll be reborn into something new. So the statement and the idea that the world is too small for him is 100% accurate. Now, the next piece of evidence it uses comes from Fantastic Four issue number 244, which brings in this idea that basically power dampeners or mental blocks were placed in the mind of Franklin to close his mind off to his power, which led to all kinds of crazy stuff. But the question is how early did this power manifest? And the idea is that Franklin's simplest ability is to create a dream version of himself. His greatest power is to create a kind of dream version of reality, which was seen in Heroes Reborn. We'll talk about that here in a little bit because that's gonna be one of the most important pieces of evidence here that Franklin secretly controls everything. But the next piece of evidence it provides is it asks the question, if Franklin Richards is so powerful, why doesn't he just fix everything? And this theory explicitly says he does. Franklin is why heroes never die. And if they seem to die, they simply just come back. This did not happen before he was born. His grandfather, after whom he was named, died and never came back. This had a devastating effect on Franklin's mother, Susan. So as Franklin grew up, and as you became more and more aware of the world, you will notice that fewer and fewer characters die. And if they do die, they stay dead for shorter and shorter periods of time. Now that is an accurate statement. With the exception of the original Uncle Ben and the original Gwen Stacy, no one who's ever died in Marvel Comics since the introduction of Franklin Richards in 1968 has actually stayed dead. And even in the case of both Uncle Ben and Gwen Stacy, they returned in such a capacity that Peter Parker was able to come to terms with their deaths 
and then move on. But if we look at somebody like Colossus, who died in the late 1990s at the end of the legacy virus in an effort to find a cure, effectively AIDS for the mutant population, that it turned out Colossus was never actually dead. Colossus came back in Astonishing X-Men in 2004, and it turned out he had just been quote unquote taken prisoner and used for experimentation. He was discovered by Kitty Pride, and he's been a part of the landscape ever since. Now, another strong piece of evidence that this theory uses is the nature of the Marvel Universe since the introduction of Franklin Richards. Prior to the intro of Franklin in Fantastic Four Annual Number 6 back in 1968, Marvel followed real time. If you went and picked up a story in October of 1962, that story was happening in October of 1962. You would see autumn leaves and all kinds of stuff. But after Franklin was introduced, Marvel slowly stopped following real time to the point that the universe effectively just became static. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute because there's an even more compelling piece of evidence that really supports that. But the next piece of evidence that it presents here is the question, why don't the heroes ask him to fix specific things? And what it does is it invokes the death of Johnny Storm or the perceived death of Johnny Storm in Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with that, and it's probably one of the best moments in the history of the Fantastic Four, that the forces of Annihilus in the negative zone, right? Just this army that spans and potentially the trillions, and in fact, almost wiped out the entirety of the Marvel Universe, that a portal is basically opened to the negative zone. And it comes down to Johnny Storm, Ben Grimm, Franklin, his sister Valeria, and a couple of the members of what was called the Future Foundation, basically a coming together of really smart kids, to effectively stave it off. Johnny Storm ends up staying behind, and Johnny Storm fends off against like a billion of these bugs. Now, under any normal circumstances, Stance, if this was written or even given to us in any other medium, a film, a TV show, whatever, Johnny would have been dead. But what we end up finding out is Johnny was just unconscious. He was effectively knocked out and he was taken as a prisoner. He goes on to seize the cosmic control rod for himself and then to lead an entire army against Annihilus, take his place and then seize control of the Annihilation Wave for himself. As completely impossible and improbable as that sounds, he would have been killed under any normal circumstance. This theory puts forward the idea that whatever fix Franklin Richards came up with in order to quote unquote save the day, that one, it was predicated on his perception of his uncle Johnny Storm, heroic, strong, capable, powerful, but that it would also have to follow little kid daydream logic and fit in with the events as they've already happened. And so instead of Johnny Storm just popping up and just being like, nope, I'm not dead and I never was. Basically, Johnny Storm, if he ever came back to life, that whatever convoluted explanation that was given in the comics, that it would be a story that would be dreamed up by Franklin Richards, given his perception of the situation and how he perceived his uncle. And that's exactly how those events transpired. It's exactly how those events unfolded. But following this, it brings into question if Franklin Richards has all this power and Franklin Richards does these small little things, how does this tie in to his role in quote unquote controlling the Marvel Universe? Because up to this point, it's just kind of been conjecture more than anything else. And what it does is it says the first we see of Franklin as a young child is when he plays on a farm in Fantastic Four issue number 135. What does he naturally do when he's left alone? He watches ants and they keep marching round in circles like they were following orders. From the look on his face and the comments in the minder, he's just watching them. To cosmic beings, humans are ants. Franklin is a cosmic level being. He unconsciously makes ants walk in circles. This is not deliberate and it's certainly not malicious. It is simply how he wants things to be and it is so. As we saw in Heroes Reborn, critics sometimes observe that Marvel Comics can be repetitive 
superficial, and lack any real danger. This is exactly what a young child wants from his stories. This panel could be a comic book fan distressing that his favorite character had been killed and wanting that character to come back, referencing a particular panel where it looked like Susan Storm was dead. And so it asked the question, how much does Franklin actually control? And it says, we see that Franklin has virtually unlimited power to control the universe to protect his family when they are in danger. And he often often does this unconsciously. How often are his family in danger? The answer, all the time. They're superheroes. They put their lives on the line every single day. Then how often would Franklin feel an unconscious worry about his family? All the time. Then how often would Franklin be subtly fixing things by putting things back how he thinks they should be? all the time. As a young child whose parents face death every day, what would be Franklin's greatest unconscious fear? The future. Like any young child, he would dislike too much change. Would he simply remove all the bad guys? No. Young children like stories about bad guys being defeated. It makes them feel safe. Franklin would ensure his favorite bad guys keep coming back in order to be defeated again. Young children like their stories to be repetitive. If this is all true, what would we expect to see in the Marvel Universe? Time slowing down, heroes surviving against the odds, and sometimes even coming back from the dead, the same villains coming back again and again, occasional moves back in time when things go wrong. We would expect to see Franklin Richards subconsciously controlling the Marvel Universe. And this is where the most interesting piece of evidence comes into play, Heroes Reborn. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with the Heroes Reborn storyline, this was a follow-up to the events of what was called the Onslaught Saga. The Onslaught Saga was the result of what happened when Professor Xavier had shut down the mind of Magneto after he ripped the adamantium out of Wolverine's body. Because of this, he actually ended up absorbing Magneto's consciousness into himself. What this meant was that Magneto's hatred of humanity merged with Professor Xavier's frustration with humanity. This gave birth to a whole new psychic entity that almost killed the Marvel Universe. It was called Onslaught. At the end of the Onslaught saga, basically everybody except for the X-Men and Spider-Man jumped in to what was basically Onslaught's energy form and sacrificed themselves to kill Onslaught. Following that, Franklin Richards appeared inexplicably with a blue ball that he just carried around everywhere and he would never let anybody take it from him. Come to find out what he had done in order to maintain this idea that the superheroes always win is that he had resurrected all the superheroes from the dead put them in this whole new universe that he had created called the Heroes Reborn universe, changed all their origin stories, and let them live their lives. But as in the example, when he was on the farm, he was observing the ants going in circles. Now, eventually at the end of that, you get Heroes Return. And guess what happens? Franklin Richards takes all those characters that he had brought back from the dead and puts them back in the main Marvel Universe with all their stories intact. Now addressing the idea of his older self, this is one of the very few instances in Marvel Comics when Franklin gets to be the hero in the story. Because how many kids who read comic books imagined that they were the person under the mask of Spider-Man. When you look at Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four, you look at how things ended. Galactus resurrected from the dead by Franklin Richards from the future. How did that whole thing transpire? That Franklin Richards from the future came to the past, removed the mental blocks of his younger self, and then taught him how to use his powers, to harness his powers, hold on to those powers because they would be needed at a future point in time. The adult Franklin Richards shows up at the perfect moment right when he's needed the most, this kind of heroic moment, and in turn takes the powers of his younger self, resurrects Galactus from the dead, makes him his herald, which is something that Franklin seemingly always wanted, and then they destroy the Mad Celestials, which were going to kill his father and every superhero on Earth. He gets to tell his superhero story, the thing he always wanted. We've never seen that since. He got out of his system and that was it. More recently in Marvel Comics, with the current Fantastic Four run from Ryan North, Franklin, by his own admission, says that he intentionally removed his knowledge 
that he had powers because he realized how dangerous his abilities were and that every year, once a year, he allows himself to use his powers, that he allows himself to change things, to make some small adjustment here and there to the entirety of the Marvel Universe in any number of capacities. How far reaching that is, we don't know. What he's done, we don't know. But again, all this information points to the idea that since the day he was born, going into an age when he could process what was happening around him, developed strong familial bonds and strong friendship bonds, he either consciously or subconsciously manipulated and controlled reality in such a way to where he would never have to worry about losing his friends and family, he would never have to worry about the superheroes being defeated by the supervillains, and he would always get to see his friends favorite supervillains defeated by the superheroes. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I know some folks are going to decry and say it's not true. Some folks are going to agree. I want to know what your opinions are, and I will catch you all later. Peace.